Welcome back to my channel. My name is Leslie Onstead. I'm the creator of the Color Art Products. I want to thank everybody for showing up to our collaboration on January 16th, our Ring the Bell collaboration. That event was very successful. I am overwhelmed with joy with all the emails and comments that I've received from people thanking us for giving us this event, get, holding this event, and for the mega prize, for the prizes. So without further ado, the mega prize winner is, drum roll, Sherry Ellis. And my channel winner is Katie Walker. Yay! So in today's video, I'm going to go over the colors in the Beast of My Heart kit. Now this was a set that we came out with last year for Valentine's. Some of you got it, many of you didn't, uh, but we were asked if we were gonna bring it back. What you may not realize is when we do a set, we do a special discount on the product off of what maybe you were buying them individually by a jar. So some people will ask us to come back and uh, repeat that set again the next year, but especially for Valentine's. Uh, the Winter Lights and the Firefly set from uh, last year and the year before, they're going off tonight. This is the last night you can get them for at least probably another year. And just to give you a heads up, tomorrow we're announcing Secret Garden. It will be the very first set, brand new set of colors I've come out with since summer when we did the uh, jelly bean set. Uh, since then, we did the Rustic Earth, which had some old and some new. Firefly, of course, and Winter Lights was a repeat set for the fall. And we're really excited about the Secret Garden colors. Uh, it's just a joy to make this product for you guys and to see what how many talented artists out there can do some amazing stuff with this. So without further ado, let's get started on the Be Still My Heart reveal. And stay tuned, there's a little bonus segment with me putting all of our products that Color Art makes, somehow getting it to go into resin. So stay tuned and I'll see you there. So I wanted to show you our Be Still My Heart set. This was released a year ago for Valentine's. Uh, we ran it for a short month and a half and then it went back into the vault. And I've had quite a few people ask, they'd heard about it but never seen it. They've seen people play with some of the colors but they couldn't get their hands on it. So we re-released this. Some people got it, but a lot of people didn't. So uh, what I like to do is I paint them out first. Anything I get at home, I paint out with water just to see what the true color looks like and what sparkle I'm going to get. Boy, that fireworks in the center. You can see all of that. There's a rainbow sparkle in the fireworks. That's this one right here. Here are the jars of colors, what they look like. Uh, this one, I've got the names on the side. This is French Kiss. It's a really warm purple. This is the Lemon Twist. Actually, I'm sorry, Twisted Lemon, like Twisted Sister. Tempted Tulip. Look at all the sparkle in these things. So this particular collection, this is Splendor in the Grass. Boy, this is a pretty green. That's this green right here. That's a beautiful green. That's this powder right here, Splendor in the Grass. This is that Huckleberry. I don't know if you're picking up the violet in here, but there's a violet. That's a kind of a blue-violet color with a whole lot of sparkle in it. That's the Huckleberry. This is that fireworks I was talking about. Boy, that has a beautiful rainbow effect in it. See the rainbow sparkles in there? I thought the name fireworks kind of fit perfectly. 
This is Sassafras. I don't know, the name of I'll Be Your Sassafras came to mind when we named this. It's a beautiful warm goldy brown, I guess, if you want to call it that. It's a really warm, rich gold. This is, this blue, is Sweet Tart. Do you remember the candies when we were kids? It's sweet. It looks like sweet art because there's only one T. There's the Sweet Tart blue. Okay. This, yeah, I'm in love with this peach color. This color is called Bleeding Heart. Boy, that really sparkles. Color is stunning. Let's see if I can get this a little bit more of a representation on the camera so you can see that under the light. This color right here is called Pink Lemonade. You can tell this set has a lot of warm purples and oranges and or I mean peaches and oranges and reds just because you know Valentine's made me think of warm colors. This is a very, very, very popular color. Boy, I can't tell you how many people have come back and wanted to order more of this color called Nebula Star. It's a stunning color. Now, when we did the Beast Till My Heart, we did offer these in an individual 30 mil jar after the set was over, but that means you've got to buy the whole darn set. You've got to buy, you know, a full jar of one color within the set. You get a discount. Uh, you get a special price on them. You get your acrylic medium. You get your scoops. This last color was the very last but not least is Cupid's Crush. It looks a little bit pink here, but it's kind of our version of the red for it. Our two bonus colors are Love Struck, which is not that sparkly in the jar. And a really, 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 really rich red. Now this color takes a while to break down. It is mostly color, not much sparkle in the jar. You can see what a difference between, say, the pink and the love struck. This one, that's why these are called the Glitz Collection. This is in the regular primary elements. But this color of red is so pretty. It is such a deep, deep red. And there's still a little sparkle in it when you get up close. Now put in acrylic paint, it's very different. I'm going to show you that too in just a second, but let's get this Luna. The other color is the Glasswing Butterfly Set color called Luna. This is a bling it. This is a pure mica. It can go into anything. Uh, anything, because mica, pure mica can go into anything. Get an idea what it looks like on the back of my glove. See, this is a, that smokiness is part of the film they put on there, but as soon as it hits the surface, look what happens. Look how pretty that Luna is. It's going to look a little funny on the paper here. It's going to look kind of like this grayish when you just put it down with, with just water. But don't be deceived. There's nothing wrong with it. Look at the flash of that. See, these four colors, the Luna, the Aurora, the Angel Wings, and the Rain. That's a blue, green, red, and violet. They don't make one in a gold. It's like the interference on steroids. Look at the, the bounce of that color on there. Okay. So now let's see what it looks like mixed in acrylic. I'll be right back. So as I told you in my last video, I like to add a little bit of the media on the bottom. I think it's because I've been mixing these pigments for so many years. I always have this fear that somehow I'm going to leave some on the bottom. So I'll... Uh... Put a little bit of it on the bottom so we know the bottom is lubricated. So if I put this pigment on the bottom, it, it doesn't get stuck and I feel like I'm stirring it up from the bottom. I'm going to add some love struck. Now, word of warning, our reds take longer to break down. You really want to give them a chance. 
to dissolve. I think our reds and our browns take the longest to dissolve. I've had some people say that they wait overnight. Look how pretty that red is under that camera here, right? Now I'm going to, I think I've got some of that broken up. I really want to get that pigment completely broken up. This is real time. I'm not speeding this up for you. That way you're patient with it. Like I said, some people will mix it and then they just kind of let it sit for an hour or two or overnight because they want to make sure that red is completely broken down. Set these aside just for a second so we can focus just on this color right here. Can you see that red? A gorgeous red under that light. See how close I can get to that for you. This is love struck. If you don't have any, you need some. That one mixed up pretty quick for me. Pretty happy, okay? Now I'm going to set this aside slightly. Let's do the Luna. Again, it's going to look a little strange. Because it kind of has this, it's real pretty as soon as it pops in the jar. Look at all that sparkle. But it kind of has this gray cast to it, right? Again, that's the, the film that they put on there. It's just to cast that illusion of that violet. But as soon as it hits the surface of whatever it's on, it will pick up the other colors around it. It won't stay looking like this grayish. It's just this really strange optical illusion of what it's mixed on. But let's see what it looks like on this paper that I swatched. Let's get these jars out of the way so I don't dump them over. Okay. So what does it look like painted next to the one I did with water? Obviously it's night and day. <laughs> hey, I could sit and paint this red all day long. It is so pretty. I'm going to paint it into that other red so you can see the difference when I lift this up. Huge difference. I'm not sure how much sparkle we're going to catch in that camera there. That is a pretty deep bloody red. And I felt it was appropriate to go into this Valentine's set. Now the Luna might not look that much different. It's still going to kind of have that getting my, my brush cut nice and clean. I want to get all that red out of it so I don't taint this. And yeah, my brush still has water on it. That's not actually fair to the paint. Here, let's get this blended out here. You can kind of see it side by side, right? But what if I wanted to mix? Oh, wow. Look at that. I'm starting to catch that reflection there. This will be really pretty in an acrylic pouring. It'll be a surprise flash. I have several YouTube artists that are in love with the Aurora and the Aluna. <laughs> you might find some of them out there. Uh, several affiliate artists and YouTube artists that have started to play with these 
four colors from the glass wing set. So what if I wanted to mix some together? Okay, I only have a little bit of this Luna mixed up. And let me tell you, I could put a little bit of this pigment in it, but we know how long it takes to break down. So it's almost better to take a little bit of my love struck that I've already got on the spoon and mix it right in there. Holy moly. Look at the color it just made. Big difference. So let's paint this one here, this beautiful color we just made, by just a little spoonful of the, the Love Struck mixed in Luna. Wow, this is a really pleasant surprise. Wish I'd made more of it. I will make more of it. <laughs> That's really pretty. So let's see what happens when I Paint this down. I'm just kind of kind of run a line a line above both of them. Look at that. See the sparkle in that color? And the Luna pulled it towards a violet because the Luna is a violet. Paint this out a little bit further for you guys. So you can see the dazzle in the camera. See that sparkle as it moves? Yeah. I like things all that are sparkly. So there's... There you have it as far as what's in your Be Still Your Heart set. So, well, this is a bonus section. I've got some silicone coasters. Saskia already asked me where I got these from, so I'm going to have to look them up. I only got them in the last couple of weeks, so I should be able to do this. But there's these beautiful coasters that have these patterns, coaster molds for resin that have these patterns in here. Now, experimenting this morning, I tried taking interference green. You can see the green, interference violet. And then I took just a splash of that angel wings from the glass wing butterfly set to get this illusion here, right? Now here, <clears throat> I took primary elements, huckleberry, and water. Now by the very nature, water and rubber isn't going to do anything, right? Let's focus on this one so you can see how I did this. Make sure my brush, brush is clean. Nothing's in it. Okay. So what I did learn this morning when I just put water on it, I wanted you to see the mistake I made. Okay, and I put a little bit of the primary element huckleberry in here. I was trying to get into to the pockets of here, right? The this uh, highlight those sections that sunk below. They go they're recessed where the Baltic amber prism pour here on the top is a is a raised. I think that's called re, e, 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 like embossed and then debossed if you were doing printing. So when I first put it in, see how it beads up, right? The water beads up. So that I realized it just took my, my puppy pad here, made sure there was very little water, and then just started, kept reapplying it. Make sure this works for you while I'm doing it right in front of you guys. I have a smaller brush. I'm going to try this smaller brush. 
that'll be able to get in those crevices because this is a completely different shape and had different areas here to get into. But where that water was too heavy, I'm able to go back and actually paint some of that color in. So I'm just going to do a light highlight. I'm not adding any more water. Whatever water is on my brush is enough. And I'm just kind of giving the recesses of this a little highlight. Let's see if I can do this close to the camera so you guys can see this. Still a little bit too much water in that cavity, but you see as the water starts to go away, the paint begins to adhere. Now I'm just trying to get little glimpses. I just want little pops of color. I don't want the whole thing filled in. I want little speckles, and especially the Be Still My Heart set or any of those glit sets, one of those three glit sets, because those colors are so darn sparkly, they're going to look fantastic in this resin. No, I'm probably a little boring using just the one color, but see how I'm now just adding it in there? I'm not adding any more water anywhere where it was a little bit too wet. It's starting to stick. Sorry, I turned it towards myself there so I could see these pockets. get it down there and get the rest of them with a little bit of something in them. Okay, so I got a little bit of a pop in there. This, uh, the way this has these little swoopy lines, it has these little grooves in there. This particular one lends itself for me adding the wet color in those areas. Okay, so what if I wanted to make sure my brush is completely bone dry. Just give it a little extra something something. Now, violet and green kind of contrast. I could put blue in there. I could put that blue in there, but it would uh, just kind of blend in with the blue violet that it has. This is a it says interference cream, but it's not interference cream. This is some interference cream. I'm going to just really careful to see if I can't daub just a little bit of that green here and there. I don't know, the brush is acting funny like it's, it's uh, still moist. Now is when I had the, uh, Saskia gave me the idea of a Q-tip. I'm just going to be really, really careful to just add a little dot of green to each one of these cavities. And I mean just a speck. It doesn't matter where it lands. Just because green and purple are going to show some shift when this turns. Can you see that? See the green? And, the, and that huckleberry. Okay, so uh, we've got a different one here where this has the raised areas or the lines. Here the raised areas are the bigger areas, right? These raised areas are the bigger areas. So I'm going to actually take that bleeding heart, that peach color, I don't know. Something tells me to put something down in the recesses first before I go to the top. So I'm going to play with what I've already got out here. I know the green's going to be kind of look like it's overdone in all of these, but we know the green will bounce against the the light will bounce between the green and that. I don't know if this is a mistake or not, kids. I'm just going to see what happens here. My gut is I want to put the gold accent down into the rivers, and I'm going to put an amber accent here with my prism pool. But 
just to stay consistency. There's a consistent with you. There's a little bit of the green just to see what it does. I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference. I've wet my brush, then I've patted it dry. All I want to be able to do is pick up a little bit bleeding heart. I don't need much water because I don't want it to beat up. There we go. Don't beat up on me. And I know that green's going to seem a little weird in there, but we're going to get some an optical illusion of it shifting by having that little bit of green in there. I hope, I pray, this is going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour two layers of resin in here. Some of them are going to have clear. Some of them are going to have some color. We'll actually use some resin art in that first layer. And then I'm going to show you how to mix the primary elements up so they will go into the resin. You know, you can put acrylic paint in resin as long as you state less than 10%. So technically the primary elements, once dis dispersed in some kind of acrylic media, will work. Okay? But, uh depending upon the thickness of your paint, and since I'm talking about it right now, your Amsterdam tube paint may be considered medium body, where the golden carbon black, you know, this is considered heavy body. Prism pour is considered medium body and if there's body to the acrylic it can shorten your working time for example i use art resin it's a 45 minute working time if i was going to use a heavy body paint in the resin it would literally cut that in half i might get 20 minutes maybe a medium body paint will more than likely cut your time down by a third so what would be a 45 minute might be 30 minutes. You're going to have to kind of test it out yourself. But Vivid Art Fluid, which is just like milk. Let me pour some out here in a container so you can see it. It's liquid. There's no thickener at all. This is actually what a raw acrylic emulsion looks like. When the manufacturer gets their acrylic, it comes like this. It's very, very juicy. It looks like milk. Then the manufacturer adds the thickener, right, to get it to the viscosity that they want. So Golden can say I have a heavy body and Prism Pour can say I have medium body, right? But this basically has no body. So if you put uh, a water-soluble color like one of our primary elements into it, we'll be able to form it into a paste and use it. But I'm going to use the, but, but now here's the trick. The primary elements are translucent in acrylic, but they're going to be opaque in resin because they're not really compatible, but they will bead in. Acrylic paint is very opaque in resin because it will not dissolve, but it will bead in. So what I'm going to do with these, one of these is going to be done, a couple of them are going to be done with clear. One of them is going to be actually, uh, I'm going to do resin art on the first layer. And some of them are going to have a backing. Literally the second layer will be made with the primary elements because it's going to be more opaque. Okay. Sorry for that slight segue on the viscosity because before I get to these, I want to add some of this prism pour Mayan gold, that bright yellow gold that we've got in the veins. Now, you got to be really careful doing this. I, I almost think I should be using uh, some kind of a bamboo skewer. Now I have 
a little popsicle stick here. The, actually, this is not a popsicle stick. These are wooden stirs, the old-fashioned coffee wooden stirs. I have like a box of them in here. So I'm just going to take some of this Mayan gold. I mean, I could pour it out, but I happen to have a bottle open. I'm going to see if I can't just... this is going to work. It might have been better to use the gold as the highlight on the top. But let's go with this. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if I accent these little sections. Better I experiment than you, right? Okay, that took me a lot longer than I wanted to because this went really, really fast. And I'm going to show you if it's raised, you can go pretty quick. Now, I really like that Baltic Amber against the purple. So I think I'm going to grab, it's a pretty combination. This is really pretty, not to sit and be redundant, but it'd be nice to see how both of these turn out. So when I applied it to here, what I did is I took the wooden end of my paintbrush and kind of scraped it across. I could, you can also take your finger and go across. The whole point is, is you're not going down in the recesses with whatever you're using. Um, I'm going to try to do it with the back of a spoon. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be risky or not. I need some of this poured out somewhere. Just a little bit. I don't want to waste any of this stuff. God, I love that color, that Baltic Amber. Such a pretty antique, antique gold. It's like a nickel azul gold in gold. So I'm just going to press the spoon down in here so I get some paint on the back. I don't too want too much. I don't want it too sloppy. I kind of want it even. I could take my paintbrush or this little stick. It has a little Mayan gold on it, but kind of spread it around. So we don't have any gloppiness in here. I just want the straight paint. Remember, it's, it's pretty thick. Incidentally, for those of you that believe that prison pours are ready to pour paint, believe me, it is not a ready to pour paint. Okay, so let's just scoot this right across the top and accent those honeycombs. See that? Just going to accent that. get the edges. I want to make sure I get all the edges. But because the concave of the spoon, see the shape of that spoon, it's not going to go down in those holes. So this is a good way to add your accent lines and not risk the paint going down into those other colors that we've got there, right? So I'm just getting these edges here. Don't want to miss anything. I'll Okay, and just for consistency, here's my one that's done with all the interferences. But to accent those lines, might have been nice with gold, but because I have the Baltic Amber open, it's already got some out here. I'll push some on the back of that spoon again. Just make sure I don't have any gloppiness.
brings up those lines. This type of this type of one's real easy. So you see the beautiful lines and you see the sparkle, right? Okay. I'll be right back. I'm going to mix up some resin. There's a lot of bubbles in my resin, so I'm going to try a little trick. In the cup. Just a just a little bit, just a few seconds, just to try to get some of those bubbles to pop. It's easy when you make sure it resin up. If it's perfectly, if it's warm enough, it goes clear. All right, now I'm still getting kind of a milky thing. It looks like a lot of bubbles in there. So let's just pour a little bit of here in this one. We know for sure this one is going to. Use a clear first layer. Shouldn't have to use that stick to move it around. Now the, the pink is moving a little bit, but not much because the primer elements are a different solubility. They're water soluble and resin is not. Okay, so for the purpose of being able to raise this up, I've got this on this plastic thing. You guys can see it went pretty clear. I've got that lighting right there so you can see all the light. Okay, I'm going to let this set for a couple hours. We're going to do the other two. Same thing. I think I'm going to put just a clear, a little bit of clear backing on this and see what it's going to do. It's probably enough. It's more than enough in there. Just to get it to roll around and cover up my first layer. That's all I'm trying to do. Now I painted the primary elements and I did this Baltic Amber a couple hours before I even filmed, so I know for a fact these are bone dry. For those of you who have not seen the resin art, normal mica powders go in and you have to be very, 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 very careful when you stir. They're just a dry mica powder and it poofs up if you're not careful. Resin art, while it may look like a beautiful dry sparkly pigment in the jar, see how big those flakes look? They're pre-moistened flakes. They're prepped and ready. So basically the third stir, it's dissolved. It's gone. And you can see how much that sparkles. Oh my God, that is one of the most beautiful colors we've ever made. Look at that. Every color of the rainbow. This color is called Amaryllis. It's a galaxy diamond color and you can see why. Okay. So let's pour it as the backing for this one that's got all this interference in it.
because whatever you put in the front is what's going to seem be seen first if that's the side you're going to use and in this case I'm doing decorative work with the pattern of the coaster incidentally congratulations to Sherry Ellis our mega winner for the uh, collaboration we did on January 16th that uh, celebrate ringing the bell for 2022 our next event is April 23rd and 24th it's going to be a two-day event we're hoping that every one of our available affiliates it doesn't mean they're you know we're trying to pick a date that everybody can live with um, oh wow look at that Woo -hoo! look at that in the camera babes that is a resin art and if you've never played with a resin art before, holy schmoly. So I'm just going to make sure it fills in all those little cavities. I need just enough for layer one. Can't wait to see what that what that green and the violet and that little bit of blue does and that that Baltic amber popping in those veins. What that's gonna look like? A bunch. How pretty this is. Now I was gonna put a black back or dark back on this, but I don't think I really need to. Sorry, I'm turning it towards me just to get into this last little part of it. But here's. Look how gorgeous that is. Positively stunning under that light. Oh my gosh. You can already see the waves in there. I'm, uh, I'm actually tempted to just put in more of this and leave it at that. I am going to do it. I'm going to fill it all the rest of the way up. So we're making another little batch of the amaryllis. I don't want to ruin it. I think this is pretty just the way it is. Putting the um, the resin art as the backing on this. That's stunning. Just stunning. Ugh. I want to do this again. <laughs> you can tell. But look how fast that mixes. I mean, it's boom, done, in, gone, ready to do. Ready to do it. That's because of the, our special technology where we pre-moisten we prep these pigments so all you got to do is mix and go so let's fill the rest of this up let's scrape all the rest of this out now that one was very very that one's this one's a fun one to do Oh, it's funny. The second layer is a little bit brighter than the first layer, so I'm just kind of, kind of, I must have had more color in the second batch of resin I pushed. Make sure that's all. I'm still wondering if it's filled it all the way up, but maybe it just needs a tiny bit more resin. There it is again for another look. Let's pop the bubbles. Never run a heat gun too long on your silicone mold. You can ruin it. I mean, just a couple seconds and you're done. So there you have it. Really pretty. I've got a lot of resin. I've got enough resin left to fill this whole thing up. Boy, I must really be in Valentine's mode because I can't seem to stay away from the pinks. This is a color called Pink Mink, where the amaryllis is more of a corally pink. This is like an in-your-face, like, rhodamine pink. 
and I have all this excess resin so we're going to fill up this whole cavity with this. Okay, so let's put some pink mink in here. Pink mink! It's another galaxy diamond color. Now I've got a lot here so I'm going to put about one and a half of these in here. Now one more time, count you could not do this with regular mica pigment. It'll just poof. Wear this. Wow. Sorry, I can't help it, but get this stuff up in the camera and let you see all the rainbow sparkle in there. I think that's enough color in there. I was worried if I had enough, but I see enough color in there. So let's pour this in this cavity. Perfect. Wow, 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 wow. There's a little bit left in the cup. Wow. Look at that. Ooh. Just one more little hit of the heat gun on that thing. I've seen some bubbles pop up that don't exactly make me happy. And my other three, I'm going to put back on this mat. Now these are the two that have been poured with a clear background, clear top, right? The first layer is clear. This first layer has the amaryllis. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to wait for about, I don't know, typically it's four hours because you're your setup time on art resin is about eight hours. It doesn't mean it's completely dry, but it's it's manageable. You can touch it. You can definitely pour a second layer. And the second layer usually is done in half that time, so that would be four hours. But because these are so shallow, I'm going to come back and check these in two hours. And if not, it'll be four hours. I'll let you know how long it actually took until I did the second layer. And then we'll do the demolding. Okay, we're back. It's been, I want to say about two, three hours. <clears throat> it's not set up where you can take them out of the molds. But they are set up where we can put another layer on. And so in this one, which we have the huckleberry, which is kind of that uh, blue-violet. Let's see if the... We can't pick up much other than the Baltic Amber and the Blue Violet. Most of what I'm hoping will sparkle will happen when we flip it over. I'm going to mix some prism pour a little bit in my acrylic. This is like a Neptune's Gaze. It's a greenish teal and uh, purple and turquoise go very well together. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of this Neptune's gaze. I'll set this other stuff aside. I'm going to set this out of the screen right now. Some of my resin now. <clears throat> when you're using acrylic paint, you don't want to go beyond a 10% threshold. Uh, I'll do more projects moving forward so you'll see me actually measure out how much to use. Um, it's approximately for every ounce 10% would be 3 mils 5% would be a half a mil I mean one and a half mils I just put a little squirt in there let's see what it does See what it looks like. It's so funny how turquoises either turn green or blue on camera, but you can hardly ever see see teal. But that is a beautiful turquoise. 
and it's pretty because it's an acrylic it's going to be a little bit more opaque right than the resin art you see how the color went opaque it's more solid which is fine we need an opaque backing but to add a little something something to it I'm going to add a pinch of that color from the Glasswing Butterfly set called Rain. Yes, I'm hooked on these four colors. You're going to see me use them a lot. And I'm just going to put in a pinch. Now that's a mica. There's no conditioner on it. Let me see what that ring looks like. So I need to be really careful, not stir it up too much, not stir it up too fast. Because it's opaque, how much is actually going to show? That's the question. I've never actually tried to add more mica to a prism pour in the resin. This is my first time actually mixing the prism pour in resin. My first experiment at it. But we know that acrylic paint works as long as you stand a certain threshold. And when you're dealing with coasters, you're not like doing a big piece where you need that full 45 minutes of working time, right? But still... This is not a quite as sparkly as I had hoped for, so I kind of wish I had a salt shaker to distribute this and not, it's a little risky, but I'm going to just sprinkle a tiny bit of the angel wings in here because that resin still has a tack, it's not completely dry. It will stick on that to give us a little sparkle from the front in. You won't see it really that much now. And then I'm going to pour this. I hope I have enough resin in here. I think I need just a touch more, just to dab more resin, because we want to fill up an entire back with that. Instead of trying to spread it, I'm going to just try to do the same thing I did before. Let it roll on top of the first layer. I'm just going to move this slightly carefully to the edge so it looks filled in. See how beautiful that red paint still is? It's gorgeous, emollient red shimmery paint it's just loving that light right so let's mix some of this <clears throat> in with some resin <laughs> feel like the mad scientist here let's get our piece we're going to do the full-blown red bloody ring black on so this will just have little pops of pink and gold in the front with a full-blown solid red back. Now I'm putting a whole spoonful of that in there. That may be too much. We'll see. Boy, that mixed in beautifully. But again, you're not going to have much working time when you do this. You have to be willing to be working on smaller projects like this where you're just going to mix and pour, right? Just to mix and pour. So just to be safe, I'm, I'm worried if there's just enough resin in there, just a tad more, just to make sure it's filled all the way up. And then we're going to put that red back on there.
See how opaque that red is when it's put in the resin? They're not soluble with one another, but if you use the chemistry in your favor, you'll be able to get the looks you're trying to achieve. Now I have one more that was partially filled. That's this one with the amaryllis. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and put on all the rest of this resin in this love struck and just fill up the back of this thing with rubs with love struck. So the front of this one was the one that had the wavy green. Let me get this in camera so you can see it. This is the one that had the wavy green, the wavy violet, the wavy blue. We put some uh, Baltic Amber highlights on it. And then we just poured the Amaryllis, the resin art, over it. I'm going to make sure I'm adding a little bit more red to this. I'm going to get really, really opaque. And again, I'm, do, I'm adding all that paint in there, guys, because I don't care how fast it seizes up. I want it to dry quickly. I want it to set up quick. So here is the Love Struck. I think this one's going to turn out to be one of the prettiest, but we won't know till we flip them over in a few hours. Now I'm going to have to let these completely cure for a good six hours. I'm hoping I can demold these so you get a chance to see them before this video posts. The main thing is it's about the art, right? So. I think this love strut back is going to be stunning on the back side of these coasters. There you have it, folks. And we'll be demolding these in about four to six hours. Hi, so we're back. I let these sit overnight. Sorry about the glare, but that's what's going to happen when you have dried resin. Now, I don't really remember what I put on the bottom. I guess I could look at the bottom of the patterns here and get an idea what I did. This one I'm really excited about. <laughs> okay, so let's see. This one had the raised and this one had the recess, right? So, <clears throat> how many, I don't know how many of you guys have played with these resin molds yet, but be very careful when you see people on Instagram taking the time to demold them carefully. They're not doing it to keep you in suspense. Some people might be, but really it's because you want to go all the way around the edge just carefully, very carefully pull back each section because you don't want to rip your mold. You want to use it again, right? Go back the way I just went. It's slowly pulling a little bit looser. I can see it. Okay, Ooh, some color got left in there. I'm going to have to clean that out. Okay, are we ready? Oh, that's interesting. So, I think this was the one. I put some of the blue down in there, didn't I? So it looks like just the prism pore veins are mostly showing up. I think in the light there might be some cast from that interfered screen. But it came out a little strange. But that's okay. This is an experiment, right? First time I've used this mold. Interesting mold. Okay. Oh, so... This one had the pink in it. That's why it's not showing. There's little bits of, uh, I dry brushed. What did I dry brush in there? I think I dry brushed one of the pinks in there, the Tempted Tulip or, oh, Bleeding Heart. That's why it's so subtle, because it's red against red with some gold. Okay. Sorry, I have to, I'm talking out loud to myself here. 
<clears throat> okay, so this one had blue put in there because we could see the blue behind. Again, take your time to demold it. And I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. I'm more confident with this, but make sure you separate each edge before you try to pull it off because the last thing you want to do is rip it. Do not rip your mold. I do love what the color in the back looks like. I'm happy with that. <laughs> That's that resin art color called Think Mink. Think Pink. Think pink, or pink, I'm sorry, pink mink, oops. Pink mink. Okay, without further ado, oh, that's interesting. Look what it did. Okay, this is stunning, guys. This is absolutely stunning. I was surprised, I'm very, very surprised. Pleasantly surprised, okay. This next one had the waves in it, right? And we put the same blue, that huckleberry blue violet, into the waves. And I put a layer of clear. This one has a layer of clear that we set up for about two, three, four hours. And then I used, this is the one that has the prism pour mixed in the resin with a little bit of the Angel Wings uh, Bling It powder, this color, the Bling It powder, to give it an extra little sparkle. Hopefully it shows through because that first layer is clear. Again, I, I, I am not gonna rush this. I, I, these are really special molds. I know everybody's going to ask me where I got them, and I'm going to go look it up. Saskia asked me yesterday, where did I get it? I went, ah, I got it in the last couple weeks. <laughs> and I, of all people, know that if I'm going to show it on camera, oh, yeah, now look at that. Whoo! This is interesting. So, the clear kept that blue and the uh so it was the huckleberry boo powder right huckleberry and the baltic amber prism pour that's what these veins are a little bit of clear right and then the prism pour back this is beautiful I'm really happy, considering it's the first time trying this. Makes me very, very happy. This one, <clears throat> I just took Interference Violet and brushed it one direction, flipped it around, Interference Green flipped it this direction because green and violet are gonna shift with one another. Then I just sprinkled a little bit of the Angel Wings that's that bling up color that I, it's in the glass wing set that I keep talking about. I sprinkled just a little bit in there. And then, but the veins were done with the Baltic Amber like this. So, and we backed it with Amaryllis and then I added the rest of the red. And speaking of that, I forgot to say, remember that red back here, that's the love struck that I mixed in the enamel and use that as a backing on this. So let's see what this looks like. See now, this is where it went over the edge and you gotta be really, really, really careful. It was a little bit full. I have a little edge to try to pour over. This is the last thing you want. This is when you can actually tear a mold if you're not careful. So bear with me, guys. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh. Oh my God. Okay, you're not gonna believe what I'm seeing and maybe you can't see it. This looks like this has laser glitter in it. Loida Farharda, you asked about laser glitter effect. This is really cool. So again, interference, green, interference, violet the other way, a little bit of blue. Ah, 
oh, and my veins are in there, but they're really super subtle. You can see those Baltic amber veins, but it, when you look at it up close, and I don't know if it's going to show in there, where the amaryllis is coming through, I'm getting bits that look like it's got a laser glitter effect. Oh, this is, guys, this is beautiful. I am so excited about this. I'll be doing more of this. You can bet your bottom dollar. <laughs> so there's your bonus segment. Congratulations one more time to our winners, Sherry Ellis, the mega winner, and Katie Walker, our channel winner for the six-piece set. Well, that's it. I'm really excited about the bonus segment. I'm extremely, I know I'm going on and on and on about this piece, but boy, when I look up close and I see all the shift in these things, I'm real, real, real excited. And I plan on uh, doing a whole lot more with showing the artists out there how you can use all of our color art products in epoxy because the market is going to move in that direction. There's people, more and more people playing with resin every day. So we need to educate you guys and let you know. Now, make sure you stay tuned for the next video coming up. It'll probably be in the next 24 to 48 hours. I'll be revealing the secret garden set, which will be going on sale here also in the next 24 to 48 hours. Stay tuned. Have a beautiful day. Be kind to each other. Uh, if you've not subscribed to our channel, if you've enjoyed this content, please subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, we have our Facebook accounts you can visit. We've got a Facebook group you can join and share your projects with. We have a Pinterest group. Actually, we've got a Pinterest page, but we're slowly starting to build that. We're definitely on Instagram. You can see us at Color Art or Color Art Blooms. Uh, or Leslie O at Color Art Mama, that's my personal Instagram page. I just want to say what a pleasure it is to bring color to the art market and to viewers like yourself. So thank you so much for making this possible and you have a great day.